Hello everyone, welcome to the Power Play Chess uh, channel and I would like to cover the final of the Speed Chess Championships between world champion Magnus Carlsen and uh, Hikaru Nakamura. Fantastic matchup for the final and what a final it was. Let's have a look at two of uh, the games from the five minutes uh, section. Magnus playing with the white pieces and we have a theoretical battle in the Catalan opening. But most importantly, we are going to enjoy some amazing uh, series of uh, tactics in both of these games. So let's get uh, ready for the action in uh, these two games. It starts off with a Catalan, as I said, d4, knight of 6, c4, e6, knight of 3, d5, g3. This is the Catalan, bishop e7. And we get to see more than 20 moves of opening theory, which, frankly speaking, I'm not interested to discuss here with you has been seen many times before with Magnus playing it, for instance, in the World Championship match with uh, Jan Nepomnici uh, last year, but Nika uh, Hikaru Nakamura playing it from the black side uh, regularly as uh, well. So both players obviously anticipated the, uh, these number of, uh, of moves. So here, first interesting moment, we get to see uh, the exchange of um, some minor pieces. White gives up the bishop for the knight. And after that goes for the exchange of light squared bishops as well. Relatively quiet middle game, but that doesn't mean it's going to be boring at all. That's what a lot of people usually think. But the ensuing middle game uh, positions, they are incredibly rich. Um, white has a bit more space, but black is very solid. He anchors the, the bishop on uh, on b4. Queen goes back to uh, to e2. Queen b6. Rook a c1. Rook d8. Targeting the pawn on d4. So white goes back with a knight to f3. And frankly, I, I don't think this is still a theoretical position. But both players were familiar with the ideas for both sides. Uh, white is very solid. Will at some point try to push his uh, central majority uh, given the chance. So let's see how that goes in, in practice. So black goes rook d7, intending to, to double queen c2. And interesting decision by Hikaru as he decides to give up uh, his bishop for the knight. And I'm not sure he really had to do that, but he wants to force the issue, which is understandable. Trying to equalize with black makes a lot of sense. Bishop takes c3, b takes c3, and now he goes for the move c5, aiming for uh, a pawn structure where um, white has a majority in the center, but uh, black has uh, traded off a lot of pieces and we are getting closer to full equality. But interesting uh, moment. In the first game, um, Magnus played here the move knight e5. Very understandable idea. Uh, hitting the rook, the rook went back to uh, to d8, and now Magnus had this idea of rerouting the knight from f3 to e3. And the knight is slightly better placed on e3, uh, intending to support the d4, d5 uh, thrust. So black captures, cd4, cd4, and now interesting moment, because I think uh, Hikaru um, made a serious uh, inaccuracy in, in, in at, uh, at this point. Uh, by playing the move rook d7, whereas the move b5, trying to get rid of uh, of the backward uh, b pawn, would have been uh, a better plan. Probably he refrained from uh, playing this move because of uh, queen d3 when the b pawn is pinned, but now it's time to move the queen away, queen b7. White obviously can capture the pawn on b5, but after that the pawn on e4 is going to drop as well, and that means that black is... Totally fine in that case. Was not played. Hikaru played rook dd7. Don't forget, guys, this is a blitz game, which explains the number of uh, mistakes. But we get to see some very instructive uh, ideas now. White played d5. This was the plan of rerouting the knight to e3. With the point that after ed5, well, you can just recapture, obtain a, a passed pawn, or uh, just play the move e5 kicking the knight away and get ready to recapture with the knight. For that reason, Hikaru didn't uh, capture on d5, played rook fd8, and now very nice subtle idea as white played here the move queen b1. 
What's the idea? First of all, we control the b5 square, so black is no longer able to get rid of that backward pawn. The second point is revealed after ed5, ed5, when black is unable to take on d5, because at the end of the line, after all the trades, there is rook c8 with checkmate, and look at that queen on b1, taking away the h7 square. For that reason, Black played here the move g6, so that there are no longer back rank uh, ideas. Now the move queen b2, uh, same idea that the pawn on d5 is indirectly defended as we cover the uh, entire di diagonal with our queen. If the pawn is taken, we have rook c8 and rook h8 at the end of the day. So black plays rook d6, supporting the knight one more time, rook c5, protecting, and we see that black is Passive. Black needs to uh, take the, the pawn um, in control. Queen, e, queen a7, rook d2, c1. And I think it's an unpleasant position because black can hardly do anything. Pawn on d5 can still not be taken. He may have considered here the move queen uh, b8 with the idea that after rook takes a5, finally we can take the pawn as the queen covers the, uh, the back rank. So there's no uh, mate idea. But okay, we, we could play here rook d1, and after something like b6, rook b5, white still uh, retains some, uh, some long-term pressure. But Nakamura played the move b6, and strangely enough, the first move which crosses your mind here is to play the move rook c7. was not played by Magnus, but, but why? It's such a logical move to enter with the rook on the 7th rank, uh, attacking the queen. And I was thinking, well, maybe uh, he didn't like the idea of, uh, of queen a8, which uh, does uh, pose some pressure on this diagonal. But after rook c6, the pressure uh, increases. Rook takes c6, for instance. D takes c6. And, uh, well, we have a very strong passed pawn uh, hitting the knight. Fantastic rook here. Chances to uh, to take on, on b6 as well, of course. So not really sure what, what he didn't like. If if knight e8, we, we could go rook b7 and look at that queen on, uh, on a8. It's just out of play. One other interesting line here is the move queen b8. Keeping an eye on the pawn, keeping an eye on the rook as well. But there's queen e5, which is uh, a key idea. Centralizing the queen. And you see how quickly the, the white pieces from its starting point, they can just join the action. Rook is on the 7th, Queen is in the center now. If you do take on uh, on d5, we have Knight takes, Rook takes, and Queen e7 with a massive threat against uh, the pawn on f7, which has to be defended. And after uh, Rook f8, it looks as if everything is under control, but now the third major piece is uh, entering Black's position. Rook c6 with a, with a huge threat, like if you... For instance, go for the exchange of queens with, uh, with queen e8. There is rook takes g6, which is a crushing uh, motive opening up uh, black's kingside as fg6 leads to queen g7 with, uh, with checkmate. The alternative is to uh, defend uh, against the threat of, uh, of rook takes g6 by means of uh, rook g5, but the rook is vulnerable there. And uh, black is lacking coordination. There is h4. Rook g4, f3, the rook has to go away, no chance for any sort of counterattack. White's king is absolutely safe, rook takes a4, and once again we have rook takes g6. Uh, if you take the rook we have the same mating pattern as in the previous line, but after king h7 we have queen f6 and mate on g7 is inevitable. Like queen takes c7, it's checkmate here. Right, so... Surprisingly, Magnus didn't uh, play rook c7. Uh, remains a mystery to me why he didn't go for that. Instead, he played rook c6. Looks very promising as well, uh, trying to eliminate an uh, important defender. There are, there are ideas to take on d6, followed by rook c8, uh, and trying to uh, pose some uh, serious problems. But fantastic, solid move by Hikaru. He played the move queen a8. Recurring theme, uh, defensive theme in these sort of positions. The queen doing pretty well on the long diagonal, eyeing the king on g2. And, uh, well, the, the main point is that after queen takes b6, looks as if white wins a pawn, but there is knight takes d5 attacking uh, the queen. 
If you do take on d6, well, you could take the, the queen, obviously, but knight takes e3 is a double check. And after king h3, queen g2, it's going to be checkmate on the next move. So no chance for white to take the rook on d6. Got to take on uh, on d5. Rook takes d5. And, uh, well, um, still we have the, the possibility, of course, to, to take on g6, fg6, queen takes g6. But it's n nothing more than just um, a perpetual, no chance for uh, white to uh, make uh, a silent move like rook c7 at some point because there will be a discovered check against the king, hitting the, the queen at the same time. So this is also a draw. In the game, Magnus decided to, to play h4, h5, uh, get with the king out of the way. King h2, black did the same with king h7. But after rook f6, rook d7, black just uh, keeps everything well defended, centralizes the queen. It's a free versus free plus a pawns uh, each, major pieces on the board, but black is uh, doing totally fine. And uh, after the exchange of queens, very soon a draw had been agreed by, uh, by both players. So that was the first game with the Catalan. Let's go back to the second uh, game, uh, game... Uh, with the uh, same position after uh, Black's 21st move, c5. And here, Magnus deviated uh, from the move knight e5, which he played in the first game. This time, he had a different plan. He played rook b1. Makes a lot of sense, um, especially if we see his uh, next uh, couple of moves. After queen c7, um, Black has the idea to take on d4. And you would like to recapture with the pawn, maintaining your pawn structure in the center. So Magnus played here queen e2, logical move, rook fd8. And now anchors its rook on b5. It's a very nice spot for the rook, uh, intending to exert more pressure on the b-file, but also against the pawn on a5, pawn on c5 as well, which explains black's move cd4, cd4, and now b6. Pawn defense, pawn. And after rook db1, uh, Hikaru went for the move queen to b7. With the idea that after a rook takes b6, there is queen takes e4 and black is uh, totally fine. But we get to see very interesting idea, very typical for these positions with a pawn majority in the center. We have this typical breakthrough based on the move d4, d5. And that's going to be dangerous because rook takes b6 is also a huge threat. The, the, the pressure against the pawn on e4 is, is gone. After ed5, white captured on, um, on b6. And we understand the ideas. We have seen uh, similar ideas in the previous game where the queen stays on this diagonal. So that explains Hikaru's choice of the move queen a8, which is a mistake. But let's see first why it's a, it's a mistake. Queen a8... Um, as it runs into the move e5, and now knight e4. And it's not an obvious mistake, but the queen is far away from the action. And usually with this kind of uh, breakthrough motives, white is looking for ways to build up the initiative on the king side. He has a nice pawn on e5, which could open the position. There are ideas with knight e4, get the queen in, involved. But why he didn't play it? Knight e4 is such an obvious move, but of course it has to be calculated because there is knight c3 with a knight fork on the queen and rook. There's queen g4, critical line. And after knight takes b1, there is knight f5 with a huge mating threat. Very difficult to, to deal with. Um, only move, to me, it seems like it's g6. And probably here Magnus stopped calculating. That's my... Uh, perception of, of this position. It's not obvious how he is able to break through. Ideas based on rook takes g6, fg6 are never leading to mate because once the f pawn is gone, the, the seventh rank is clear, the, the rook is gonna support the black king. But there is knight takes h6, beautiful idea. King goes away, for instance, to, um, to g7. And now, very difficult move because don't forget, black is a full rook up. In this position and there follows another piece sacrifice knight takes f7 is this really gonna work yes it's gonna work out very well for uh, for white because the queen is badly placed knight is not doing much 
no counterplay with the rooks on the d file the d file is closed the, the d pawn is not dangerous the only thing black could do is insert a discover check with the pawn but he simply dropped back with the king to g1 everything is just uh, safe now and by having taken the pawn on f7 we are threatening to take on uh, on g6 that's also one of the major advantages having the um, the rook on the sixth uh, rank rook takes f7 for instance and now rook takes g6 you cannot really go to the uh, to the h file with king h8 because there's queen h4 rook h7 and queen f6 leading to uh, to checkmate so you got to go to the other side king f8 and here again it's not clear why this should be winning black has a lot of extra material but we would like to play rook g8 but then who knows maybe the king could escape king e7 look queen g5 fantastic silent move taking away the e7 square threatening rook g8 mate king e8 only move try to run away again if a check on g8 there is king d7 and now white brings in another attacker puts the pawn on e6 hitting the rook depriving the black king from the d7 square and uh, well there's no good no convenient square for the rook to go to uh, if you stay on the seventh there is rook g8 with mate while if you go back to f8 there's this uh, beautiful uh, move rook to g7 and look at this amazing configuration of uh, white pieces there's nothing to be done against the, the mating threat on uh, on e7 very instructive line not forced but very typical uh, display of white's uh, potential uh, attack in uh, in these sort of pawn formations instead magnus played here the move rook a6 understandable but not really great queen went back to uh, to c8 and now rook bb6 um, so let's have a look um, there is um, Knight c5 on the board, hitting the rook, maybe not the best move, maybe rook c7, intending to enter with the rook on c2, it's a more active continuation. Instead, knight c5, rook takes a5 played, and now Hikaru's idea was to go for the move d4. But things are not that simple, um, for both sides actually, but look what's, what's gonna happen. Black all of a sudden has serious counter chances, thanks to the d-pawn. Uh, and white also uh, simply cannot ignore that uh, aspect. He played queen c4, attacking uh, the knight on uh, on c5, and now rook c7. And the pawn on d4 cannot be taken because there's knight b7 with the discovered attack on the queen and rook. So instead of knight takes d4, queen b4 played. Queen goes away, but now. Look what's gonna happen. We get a huge turnaround. Knight comes into d3. Now it's Black who is seizing the initiative. And Magnus, not in his biggest form uh, in the final, made here the decisive mistake. Play the move queen to b5. Attacking the knight cannot be more logical, right? To just move the queen and hit the knight on d3. Simply overlooking a simple tactic. Do you see what Hikaru played now? Pause the video if you want to solve it yourself. I'm going to tell you now, knight f4 was the move played by Hikaru. And that's a crushing move. You cannot take the knight because of queen to g4 check. And if the king comes to f1, we take on f3. It's game over. White's pieces are doing absolutely nothing on the queen side. Rook c1 is a mating threat. And if you do something about it, it it's going to be made uh, very likely uh, anyway. Queen h1 ideas, d3, rook c2. It's uh, it's pretty bad. So instead of gf4, king h1 on the board. But after queen h3, it was time to resign. There is a new mating threat on, um, on g2. And if you do take the knight now, we could take the check on f3 even faster. Is rook c1 check. And after knight g1, we have queen f3. The knight is pinned, thanks to the rook, so the queen cannot be taken. So all of a sudden, it's game over. What should uh, Magnus have done instead? Well, there was this remarkable I defensive idea to play here the move queen d2 instead of queen b5. 
probably he had seen this idea but reacted it on account of knight takes f2 and whatever happens rook c2 will follow next like if you take with the king rook c2 drops the queen instantly you could take with the queen instead still rook c2 knight e2 blocking the second rank and now after queen c3 looks like it's just game over you're hitting the rook hitting uh, the knight on the second rank so looks as if huge material loss cannot be uh, avoided here but here again calculation exercise for you do you see the best move for uh, for why there's one way to to save the game and it's the remarkable shot da -da -da -da, rook d5 fantastic brilliant defensive idea difficult to to see in advance the point is that after rook takes d5 we have a rook b8 check and if you go king h7 there is queen f5 check g6 and queen takes f7 it's checkmate that means that in, instead of king h7 uh, black should go queen c8 but that's not what you would like to do don't give up the queen um, let's go back to the position after rook d5 instead of taking on d2 uh, sorry instead of taking on d5 you could take on d2 threatening the queen but then we get a position with uh, two rooks for the queen in such positions very important to uh, connect the rooks you give up the queen but in this end game uh, the d-pawn is not going to be dangerous we eliminate the pawn and black has nothing better than just settle for a draw so some very nice tactical ideas just let's go back to that critical middle game position um, so in the game uh, we, we have seen many tactical opportunities for both sides uh, major pieces they uh, they benefit from an open position with a lot of open files um, the queen is really badly placed in the corner with queen a8 that's what we have uh, seen as well what black should have done is queen c7 keeping the queen centralized with the point that if you push the pawn now e5 we install our knight on e4 with with counterplay black is doing fine here he is um, it's material even and it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's okay because uh, this time there is no knight d4 because knight c3 does work and that's not the case when the queen is on a8 because after queen g4 knight takes b1 knight f5 fails to remove queen takes e5 that is the big difference of having the queen close to the center or far away in the corner well hopefully you found these examples very instructive i really enjoyed it, it was an amazing final which was eventually won uh, by hikaru uh, magnus made some serious uh, tactical mi uh, mistakes not only in this game in one of the other games he even dropped a piece bishop c7 knight takes c7 the piece was gone that is something you cannot really afford yourself in uh, faster time controls of course also not in longer time controls but anyway these games were the most instructive ones in my opinion so hopefully you enjoyed it and we will see each other very soon take care bye bye